what's up youtube family i'm back with another video you already know what to do do me a favor and hit that subscribe button make sure you like this video share it comments you guys have asked me so many great questions and i'm actually going to answer some in the video today but you've been asking to see my shampoo process so i'm going to peel back the hood and share what goes on at the bowl all right let's go this is my client jasmine she's been coming to me for about two years um she's natural um, she lives in a protective style, so somehow, some way, all this hair is going to be braided down and either under a wig or so in. Usually, most of the time, every couple of months, she'll take it out for a little bit, wear it curly, um, but it goes right back up. Now, I actually transitioned Jasmine a little bit out of heat damage for her leave out sections. Um, she was wearing a, you know, consistently parted in the same area. You start to get curly elongation. So over time, I trimmed her hair. We actually trimmed it into some layers so I can get more uh, of the heat damage out. And since it's going to be braided up for, for the most part, it didn't really matter. And we've grown it out over this uh, year and a half to two year period. And the heat damage is now gone. So we're going to let her hair just grow and flourish. But anyway, back into my shampoo process. First things first, detangle the hair. A part of the process I didn't get on camera, I actually went in with my leave-in conditioner, sprayed it down, and brushed through her, all her braids, pulled everything out, all the loose hairs, debris, everything. You want to do that before you shampoo, guys, so that you don't have any um, matting or tangling. It also um, is very important, don't just use a wide tube comb, go in with a paddle brush, work your way down so you can get all the way to the root and get all that shed hair out. Alright, so I break my shampoo process down into three parts. Cleanse strengthen and hydrate so there's going to be three different shampoos um i got two of them on camera i didn't i didn't think it was necessary to show you guys the last one because it's the same mechanism but the first thing i do i'm going to apply my clarifying shampoo um, i use mazani's gentle clarifying shampoo it actually has charcoal in it so it does a very good job of pulling out impurities minerals build up debris without stripping the hair down and leaving it dry so i apply that shampoo first a quarter size amount emulsify it apply it to the uh, circumference of the head and then it's very important you actually open the hair up and get shampoo in the middle okay when you're dealing with a guest with a lot of hair the shampoo does not make it down there so nine times out of ten you have residue or build up from just the simple mechanism of rinsing the hair and everything kind of rests at the back in the middle you want to make sure shampoo gets in there right work the shampoo all the way through the hair Usually on that first round, you're not going to get a, a, you know, a huge lather, but you want to make sure that you're seeing shampoo everywhere and scrub. Usually what I do is I visualize the hair in sections. I did speed this up because the shampoo process is actually quite long, but I usually spend anywhere from two minutes to three minutes with each shampoo, okay, and work the head in sections. Be very intentional about getting the scalp clean and be very intentional about parting the hair and seeing it inside those sections so you can get everything off the scalp. This first shampoo's job is just to break the first layer of buildup off and start to break down everything that's on the scalp. If you have a, a guest that has any type of underlying scalp condition, I know the trend is to exfoliate when the hair is dry and I do do that sometimes gently with either a fine tooth comb or a small like almost like a toothbrush or an edge brush. Do it very gently. You do not want to scratch the scalp and irritate it. If the client has an issue like seborrheic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis that actually exacerbates the issue and inflames the scalp and can re result in scarring or hair loss or just not a good experience, all right? I know it feels good, but that's not the best way to do it. The best time to exfoliate the scalp is actually after the hair is wet, the scalp is wet, the skin has had a, t a chance to soften and break down, it will lift right off, okay? So go in, this is now my second shampoo. Um, I'm using my uh, Mazzani's uh, Strength Fusion Shampoo. Again, spread it around the perimeter and then go inside. It's very important that you go inside and make sure that shampoo gets all the way through the hair. I will apply as much as I need to, but usually around this second shampoo, I only have to use about a quarter size amount um, for the circumference and a quarter size amount for the inside of the hair, right? At this point, the hair is starting to lather, okay? That does not mean it's clean. It's just starting to lather. I don't care who you are. Most of the time, you're getting three shampoos when you sit in my shampoo bowl. Sometimes four. I do what I need to do to get the hair clean, okay? Especially if I have a guest that's either coming out of a protective style or they are natural. There tends to be a lot of product buildup both on the scalp and on the hair. You want to make sure you get it all out before you go back to the chair, okay? So scrub, scrub, scrub. Take your time. Let this be relaxing to the client. I know I sped this up, but she <laughs> pretty much almost fell asleep. They love getting their hair shampooed. Take your time with it. Do not rush this part of the service. Another thing that we do, um, I do in the salon, and we actually do it at Mazzani as artists too, we always teach to always be detangling or ABD. 
always be detangling the entire time. So you'll see me throughout the shampoo process, kind of move my hands through the hair, pull it all out, stretch it back out, uh, separate it into sections, split it. I'm doing all that to make sure the curls are going in the same direction and they don't have the opportunity to match or stick together, especially after you come out of protective style. The hair has not been in its natural state in a while. It's gonna spring back and it's gonna curls like friends. They like to get married. They like to catch themselves for you know what you got a dreadlock and <laughs> you're frustrated the clients in pain <laughs> it's just not a good result all right so just try to detangle the entire time one good thing i love about mazani the products are very balanced and we teach this there's always going to be a balance between strength or protein and moisture so no matter what shampoo you use they're going to have slip they're going to have strength to it automatically even if it's a protein based shampoo it's still going to have uh, some slip to it so the hair can easily be detangled and not feel stripped afterwards all right i love that about this product line it's not just because i teach for them i actually love the science behind it it works there's seldom a time when i have to go back in and i have you know extremely matted hair it uses it detangles itself during the shampoo process and i love that the slip is amazing all right rinse 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 very important i'm not going to show you guys the third shampoo because we've seen um, me do it twice and you get the mechanism it's the same thing only the third one i use a hydrating shampoo and i use in this particular case mazani's true texture uh, replenishing shampoo all right it's the most moisturizing shampoo they have in the line and jasmine wanted to say hi <laughs> hi jazz and now I'm going to take you guys actually to the chair where I actually uh, chose to detangle her. Sometimes I do it at the bowl, sometimes I do it at the chair. If they have a lot of hair, I like to take it to the chair so they're comfortable while I detangle, okay? Again, this process is sped up. I like to detangle soaking wet hair. It helps you use less product and it actually helps spread the conditioner out, all right? So gently separate the hair. And here I use a wet paddle brush. Um, I think the company is called Wet and it's their paddle detangler. All right, the teeth are a little bit finer than a normal um, paddle brush and they actually bend. So they work very great to detangle the hair. I always start at the ends and work my way up to the roots. Never just dive in, okay? Um, I tend to always opt for a detangling brush rather than a comb. I know everybody loves the wide tooth comb or some people do. I don't because the teeth, the teeth of a comb don't bend. So if they hit a snag, either they're gonna pull or it's gonna rip it. It's painful to the client and it's caustic to the hair. So it's just best we use a brush. Now there is no better or worse brush. It's all depending about what you like and what works for your guest, okay? I have about every brush and every comb under the sun. I have a tool addiction, <laughs> so it is what it is. I might use this brush today and use another one tomorrow. It highly depends on the texture of the hair. For fine textures of hair, um, especially with tight coils, I tend to like this particular brush. I also have another um, detangler called the Divine Detangler by Olivia Garden. And I'll make sure I put all these links in, this, in my description area so you guys can check it out on your own. But I love this particular one for Jasmine's hair. It glides right through in no time. And y'all look at her curls. Look at them. They so precious. It bounced right back up. This is after her protective style. She actually had her leave out out. She's lost no curl pattern, no heat damage. And she does a good job at taking care of her um, sew-ins or her installs in between times. She'll wash her own hair and everything. But look at the difference from side to side. You can see that texture start to show. Those curls have popped back. I'm just gonna keep on detangling. And using when I'm done, I put the hair up into the top and I'll clip it. For Jasmine, she has a lot of hair, so I'm gonna use two clips. Make sure the clips are loose and the hair is just pretty much just sat on top of the head. And I'm actually going to put her under my steamer for a hydration treatment for 20 minutes. All right, we're back. You guys have seen me blow dry in my previous video, so I'm not going to explain this too much. Um, but I always section the hair, especially if it's a large amount of hair. I don't like to get lost in my blow dry. Um, even though I'm putting in some protective style, I'm still using my brush and my dryer. I'm not going to blow dry it to the extent that I normally would if I was doing a silk press but I'm gonna stretch it out completely and get it fairly smooth so I can braid it up. Her hair has to be braided um, <laughs> a certain way so that it lays extremely flat and it helps if my blow dry um, is pretty smooth. I'm not smoothing it out again like a silk press, but I'm gonna smooth it out fairly well. Now, um, a question that I've had come up is, you know, even in my classes sometimes, do I use a pick attachment or do I prefer the brush? I prefer the brush. Um, I have a pick attachment somewhere buried in the salon they're quick, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to smoothness, I just like my brush. Um, 
the pink attachment will get through the hair very fast, especially if you're doing a protective style and you don't need it really smooth. So it can be used in that regard. I'm just personally used to the mechanism of a brush. So nine times out of 10, I'm gonna have my brush in my dryer. When it comes to a silk press, um, I do believe the brush is gonna get the hair smoother, especially if it's a, if it's a ceramic brush like this one. Um, and again, I'll put that link in the description box. Again, people have been asking what brush I use. Um, also, you've been asking what blow dryer I use. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> this is a Russ uh, Super Freak. I am not married to tools, guys. I will change tools in a minute. I have had every blow dryer and flat iron under the sun. Um, I'm not married to them. The blow dryer is gonna do its job. And that's what this one does. It does a very good job. Um, I usually, um, for Jasmine's install, I blow dry on medium heat. All right, but as you can see here, fast forwarding, I um, have gone down and braided her down. I didn't, my camera didn't catch the braid down process for some reason, but I braided her down and I apply a net. Um, the reason why we apply a net to Jasmine's hair, number one, it keeps it all together, it helps it last longer, and it protects her hair from the sewing process. So when I sew, I'm sewing, except aside from the foundational track, I'm sewing to the net and not so much to the braids themselves. All right. You guys have seen countless videos on sew-ins. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail, only because I'm sure you know how to do it. For me, the first track is very important. I make sure I sew very close together on this bottom one and it has to be underneath the braid. So that if anything lifts up, and also when she pulls it back into a ponytail, it lays super flat. Now she opts not to leave any hair out around her sides and her back. Some clients leave it out, depending on how they wanna pull their hair up. She's still able to pull her into a completely fat, flat ponytail in the back. It just can't be lifted up, obviously, because there's no leave out on the bottom. One thing um, I may get into into a future video, um, braiding patterns are very important with a sew-in. I know there's so many out there. I'm not gonna say one is right or wrong. For me, it just typically works that I braid the hair in a certain pattern around the head. Um, I'm not too fond of picking braids up, adding them to another um, on the sides, only because it leaves this awkward gap as the sewing grows down and the client tends to have space where the sewing lifts up and that's a recipe for either um, tension bumps or for hair loss because the hair is being pulled in a odd direction, okay? So I just like to braid it a certain way and sew to the pattern that I braided. Now what I did zoom in on here is, when I flip my tracks, I actually flip them twice so that there's no bulk. So I'll pull those two tracks apart and sew them down in different um, areas so that it's actually super flat and underneath that braid and there's no bumps on the sides. Very important, we don't like humpy, lumpy sew-ins. It has to be flat. All right, so I'm gonna zoom through this. I actually want to answer some of you guys' questions that you put in my comments. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, first question. I've gotten it about 89 times now. <laughs> Where are you located? Okay, so I'm located in Chicago, Illinois. I work at Embellished Hair Studio. Um, I'm going to pu actually put my booking links and my personal website in my description box and you guys can see my social media handle up there so you can go follow me on instagram and it'll give you all that lovely information about where i work i do also travel to the east coast of new jersey where i'm from every so often usually every five to six weeks so if you follow me on instagram you can sometimes catch my booking links that i throw out for my pop-ups and i can meet you there but until then see you in chicago all right my next question i'm actually gonna post this one down below so you guys can see also i didn't want to mess up my subscriber's name but she says hello this is excellent work both the hair educating and video editing will you do a video about hair reverting as you mentioned it i live in the caribbean trinidad and would appreciate some tips as the salt breeze is a constant battle along with high humidity have a great day well that is a conundrum okay you have two things going on number one salt salt breeze or i'm assuming that salt accumulation in the air with high humidity so you have two things going on at opposite ends of the spectrum the best thing i can tell you to do is uh, number one make sure you clarify your hair very well to remove any potential mineral buildup that it just picks up from the air between the salt and sand and then on top of that make sure your hair is super duper hydrated from the time you start to the time you finish so make sure you use an ultra hydrating shampoo and an ultra hydrating um, conditioner preferably something that goes underneath a steamer um, you can purchase a, a at home steamer to use on your hair it works great but it'll help seal more of that moisture and hydrate your hair and your scalp and then make sure you use anti-humidity sprays um, after you've um, blow dry the hair. You don't want to use anything that's super osmotic beforehand because it's going to pull moisture from your hair. One battle you're always going to have with salt breeze is that salt is inherently osmotic. And what that means is it, it's designed to bind to water 
and pull it out of your hair. So at the same time you have a high humidity environment, you also have a, an environment that pulls water out of your hair. So then your hair ultimately reverts because it opens up to take water in that's in the, in the environment. So you have a constant battle. So you're really gonna have to um, seal your hair with good oils, um, whether you're wearing it natural or straight, make sure that it's sealed and hydrated. Oil is gonna be your best thing to seal that moisture in and keep the other elements out. I hope that answers your question as best as I could. That becomes a very detailed subject. I actually gonna do a video very, really soon on porosity, humidity, how water affects the hair, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Last question I'm gonna answer. Um, I've had it come up in several different forms, so I'll answer them all in kind of one batch. Everyone want, wants to know what color line I use specifically for the uh, fall color video. I use Schwarzkopf color in the salon, both their lightener, their permanent, and some of their toners. I also use some shades EQ, but for this particular one, um, I honestly can't remember offhand. I will go back to my formula book and pull it up. It's in the Schwarzkopf line, though. It's a mixture of two to three colors. Um, honestly, though, the formulation doesn't matter so much because it's going to have to be formulated totally different for the next person. I've actually done this color about three times, and the formula has been slightly different each time because you have to take into consideration the person's contrib contributing pigment, their color history, does the hair have to be pre-lightened? There's a whole host of things um, that have to go with that. This particular time, I just touched up her roots and did a glaze over everything else because she was already pre-lightened. So um, to achieve this look, it's very hard to do with permanent color by itself. The hair needs to be pre-lightened if your natural starting level is anything below a three. It's not gonna work. You can only go four levels at a time with permanent color, five if you got a high lift. But most of the times I find with textured hair, it's best to either pre-lighten or just live with a different result. We're not gonna get there with color out of a box off the bat like that, all right? All right, let's get back into the video. So I'm pretty much wrapping it up. Jasmine's um, sewing service. Um, she got a traditional install with a middle part. I'm um, using three bundles. I want to say a 22 inch hair. I can't remember offhand. Um, the hair was Indian. Um, I don't remember the vendor. Um, but yeah, it looks great. You can see my curl technique here. I do switch back and forth sometimes between a large barrel Marcel curling iron and um, my flat irons. And sometimes if I feel froggy, I will pull out my stove and my Marcel's and get to clicking and get to work. Today was not that day. Um, but yeah, her hair came out great. It looks fine. Her hair is healthy underneath. One thing also make sure guys for your sewings, it's not supposed to be tight. It's not. There's a natural tension that comes with it, but it's not supposed to be unbearable. There should be no hairs pulling, um, no tension bumps. The hair at the nape of the neck should be pulling in. Be very careful with that, guys. Hair loss is at an all time high. Please take care of your manes underneath. These protective styles is so important. Um, you can't just go with them back to back and not take care of your hair. We treat Jasmine's hair every time she comes in. And you can see during her blow dry, she has, her hair is just as long as her extensions, okay? But um, she does this for convenience. But I'm all wrapped up, it looks good. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you know when I post a video. I'm headed out.